This is Twit. Let's uh, hear what you've got for us this week, Jake. So my top story of the week has to do with the release by OpenAI on Monday of statistics having to do with the incident of mental health warning signs that they have detected in the chats that people are having with their chat GPT project. And the numbers are very interesting in that they are extremely small percentages. So I want to mm -hmm. tell you about these percentages first so that you have some sense of it. And let me, let me actually pull up these real uh, numbers and the real language because they're really important. So a couple of the things that they have, have found is that about 0.15% of users are uh, showing signs of sort of emotional reliance. They uh, describe it as indicate, indicating potentially heightened levels of emotional attachment to chat GPT. So that's 0.15% of users having that experience. Another 0.15% of users are having conversations that include explicit indicators of potential suicide planning or intent. And then about 0.07% of users active in a given week are exhibiting full-on signs of mental health emergencies related to psychosis or mania. So on the one hand, right, we look at this and we think, okay, well, 0.15%, like, what that's that's a tiny you know, not even a single percentage point right right well this is of course the fastest growing so compute piece of consumer software ever right so 800 million people use this every week which means that 0.15 percent of that is 1.2 million people wow showing signs of this stuff right mm -hmm. showing signs of really talking sp openly about uh, committing suicide and cons presumably consulting with chat gpt about that right and then uh 0.07 percent that's still 500,000 people showing outright signs of psychosis and mania in their conversations with these chatbots. And so the thing for you and I to sort of talk about, I think, Micah, is, right, this is clearly, and, and I, I haven't actually done the math on this, and I got to find out, like, what the population level incidence of this kind of stuff is, right? Do 0.07% mm -hmm. of all people, no matter what's going on, think about and talk about suicide or have show mental health signs? And if that's true, let's take it as a given just for argument's sake that that's true, what do we think the responsibility of a company like this is in the face of having what we would assume to be a sort of naturally occurring rate of mental health trouble hmm. show up inside their product? And as we've seen, right, they're, they're the parents of kids who've committed suicide after consulting with ChatGPT. This kid, Adam Rainey, committed suicide and his um, his parents uh, are now suing and, and in discovery have shown that the chats say things like, don't tell your parents and talk about the possibility of a beautiful suicide. You know, there's mm -hmm. some really creepy stuff in there. And so... So what do we what what is the sort of balance? And I should say here for fairness, right, that OpenAI, the reason we know about this is that OpenAI published this study, right? And they the the study is called Strengthening ChatGPT's Responses in Sensitive Conversations. That they worked with a group of more than 170 mental health experts to start looking at this cuz clearly they see a problem. Clearly they're seeing themselves put into court over this stuff. Yeah. You know, and the last thing I would just say about it is that the thing that a lot of mental health experts, including a former head of safety at OpenAI, who uh, was writing an op-ed, I believe in the New York Times, I gotta look back, but I believe he's in the Times. He openly says, you know, there's just way too much, uh, not enough safety is being done, but he also points out that with these statistics that have been released, they aren't showing statistics over time. They're only showing a snapshot in time. And so he wants to know, are these numbers going up, going up or right? Down. Or going down? We don't know, mm -hmm. right? So suddenly OpenAI is very much like in the kind of place that we saw Facebook in once upon a time where suddenly like societal stuff is happening on this platform. What responsibility does that platform have? Yeah, so the first thing that I always want to know when it comes to the data that's being collected or the data that's being presented is how it's being collected. Mm -hmm. um, just as a, a fan of a, of a research paper, <laughs> I that's always fascinating to me because I think that it helps to shine a light on, are we getting the full picture? You know, it, who, 
what if we have uh, technically savvy people who know to read the privacy policy and maybe opt out of memory or whatever else it happens to be that allows for OpenAI to go through and find this information mm -hmm. and then does that skew the results in its own way? So that's just one aspect of it. But yes, certainly it's, it's funny that you, you brought this up because we did have uh, Dustin in our Discord who said, uh, right as you were saying it, I wonder how these numbers compare to the numbers that health authorities see in the general population. Yeah, right. And that is something to, to consider because then it becomes, is this just a, a, you know, another place for humans who are already going to be in a situation like this to exist, or is this perpetuating? And right. then you have to ask the question of if it is perpetuating uh, or encouraging or, or pushing further, then we have to look at that. And, you know, something that continues to be brought up when it comes to the conversation of, you know, a chatbot perhaps um, contributing to furthering of psychosis or what have you, mm. is the regulations that are in place for human beings who exist in the space of, of helping with mental health issues mm. and the uh, requirement to report certain things versus these situations where it's just kind of in this uh, black box yeah, that I right. realize they're trying to make less of a black box well, and again, in fairness, they've consulted these 170 mental health experts, and they say, and this is their own reporting, so this is not mm -hmm. independent, this is their own reporting, but they say that the model now returns responses um, uh, that do not, that basically they say that sort of the, the, the bad conversations that they have identified are happening 65% to 80% less often than they used to because they're now consulting with these experts and they've come up with these sort of new taxonomies for this stuff. Mm. I think that you're right though that like, so it's one thing to just say, okay, is this just a sort of, you know, um, uh, you know, this is just society and so they're just, it's just a reflection of society and so it's sort of not their responsibility. On the one hand, I would think that that is true. On the other hand, right, like I think it's, it's fair to point out that right at the last uh, big product announcement uh, that they had, or mm -hmm. I guess two product announcements ago, Sam Altman gets up on stage with a, an OpenAI employee and his wife who is um, undergoing cancer treatment. And they have this very kind of Oprah sort of conversation about how powerful ChatGPT has been in helping her understand her diagnosis and helping her navigate her cancer journey is how she mm. described it, right? So it's very much that they are billing this thing as a trusted, you know, helper in some form. Yeah. And so the idea that they are, you know, it's one thing if you were to say, well, this is just people misusing a thing that we only intend for fun or research or something, you know what I mean? But, it, but when they're really billing it as you should trust this thing to help you interpret your medical situation. Mm, then we're suddenly in a in a different realm. It seems to me. Yeah, because especially when I think about that, I think about the requirements that you see for uh, for for tech companies that make hardware, mm. and the requirements that they have about what they can and can't say about a wearable, for example. Mm. And so Apple has to be very careful about what it says an Apple Watch can do when it comes to, because they just released that new blood pressure feature, mm. and they can't say that it tells you your blood pressure. They can say that it, over time, can give you some insights into what your blood pressure might right, possibly right. be. These, right, they, these terms terms have not been, or what is it, these claims have not been validated by the FDA, yeah, by the FDA and blah, 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 exactly. blah, like, yeah, that's right. That's one of the only places, it isn't it interesting, that's one of the only places that regulation gets involved at all. There's no privacy regulations other right. than healthcare privacy regulations. That's it. Yeah. So that's interesting, right? And, it, and it's, it's, all of this just ultimately for me continues to come back to the frustration that I thought I had before, but I had not quite realized just how much it's there as I have in the last, you know, three, four months as we've seen this happen, which is this idea that there's this mandate that things, because we can make them and because people will use them and more importantly, because we can make money, then 
this needs to exist and it needs to continue to exist and it needs to uh, keep going even though it's causing harm. Yeah, right. Instead of, I mean, think about a, uh, again, we go back to like, there's something about the things that we put into our body that get all of this regulation. If a company, if a graham cracker maker um, released some graham crackers and they had little bits of rubber in them, then the graham cracker company has to do a recall and it gets sent to every single person. They have to stop what they're doing, find the yep. place where the rubber got into totally the graham dude. crackers. Yeah, you got to you gotta redo everything. But OpenAI, uh, in this case, creates this product. We see it... Um, I, you know, of course, well, there's no official ruling on exactly the involvement, but let's just say is involved in the suicide death of uh, of at least two uh, people, and then you get to just keep you. It, it keep stays going. how it is. That's because right. Don't worry, we're working on it. We're That's working right. on it. I mean, this this is the conversation. I once upon a time had a conversation with the Mid Journey CEO David Holtz, and mm-hmm. I asked him about this very question: like, what responsibility do you have? for what your users do on your platform. Like, what's the story? And he basically, he had this very naive take about it. He basically said, well, I just think you should sort of assume the best of people. And then he also said, well, and he said as a hypothetical, and he was just talking off the cuff, he said, and this was several years ago, so I'm sure he doesn't say this thing in public anymore. But he said, uh, if I make 10,000 muffins and somebody gets food poisoning, am I supposed to stop making muffins? Yes! And I was like, and I was like yeah, dude, yeah, that's exactly what you're supposed to stop yes. doing. Like, you know, and if you go and tour any major bakery, the last thing that all these bakers put their their products through in an industrial bakery is a metal detector to just on the off chance that a bolt has fallen out of a machine into the dough, right? They take incredibly high uh, levels of responsibility for, for their product. And meanwhile, these guys are sort of saying, well, the utopia that this product is going to make possible is coming. And so the short-term job loss and the short-term mental health crises and the short-term, you know, AI slop problem, you know, no problem. It, we're, it's 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 going to be worth it. Seems to be the take. So I this is a this is a, a real this is a sticky one that really jumped out at me. I want to just say I really mm-hmm. give OpenAI credit for at least yes. releasing some numbers because a, a lot of companies aren't releasing numbers and and there's a tendency for us to sort of gang up on whoever releases their info. This was true of of Facebook, um, but I I so I'm 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 glad of that mm-hmm. and. With that has to come this kind of conversation. We have to we have to think about these companies' responsibility because that's, of course, the the world we're in now. Yeah, and I mean that's that's the whole point of what we do is trying to make sense of it and, and shine a light on it and have people you know consider uh, the the impact therein. Yeah, and you know if that mandate's going to continue to exist, then I suppose it becomes uh, our job in a way to just give people awareness that they may not have had otherwise so that they can pay more attention to how their children are using yeah. the platform or their, you know, maybe it gives somebody an opportunity to go, whoa, I need to take a step back from how I'm using this tool. Yeah, that's right. Didn't that's realize, right. Or, you know, or get some parents to get into that thought or exactly. whatever it is. That's exactly right. I think that's right. You enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.